So what we're going to practice in this tutorial is factoring quadratics when the a term of our quadratic is not equal to 1. Now a lot of times you're going to see quadratic equations that start with just x squared, but like with this example here we have a coefficient other than 1 in front of the x, and sometimes those can trip up a lot of students. So what we're going to do is we're just going to practice how we can factor out these type of quadratics. And we're going to use something called the AC method. So basically if we remember the standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So this 9 right here is our a term, this 6 right here is our b term, and this constant right here of 1 is our c term. So to use the ac method, really all we're doing is we're starting with our a term and our c term, and we are multiplying them together. So let's start just by multiplying 9 times 1 and 9 times 1 is 9. Now once you multiply the a and the c term together, what you have to do is you have to come up with two factors of that number that when multiplied will make that number and also when you add those together would give us our b term. Well we know that 3 times 3 is equal to 9. However if we took 3 and added it to 3 that would equal 6 which is our b term. All right, so once we identify the two factors that would produce this number here and would have a sum of the b term, what you do is you go off to your original quadratic here and you rewrite the first term, which is just 9x squared. But then what you do is you take each one of these two terms, and we have two threes here, and they're both positive, so we write plus 3, and then just write an x after it automatically, and then write another positive 3x because both factors were 3. So because we have a positive 3 here and a positive 3 here, we write plus 3 here and plus 3 here and just write an x after each one. And then what we have to do is we bring down our last term here, which is just a 1. So basically we have to make sure that the two terms that we write when we combine those terms would add up to be this middle term right here. And 3x plus 3x is equivalent to 6x. All right, now once we get these four terms, what we have to do next is we have to break this into two separate parts. So we're going to take 9x squared plus 3x and consider that one part, and then we're going to take plus 3x plus 1 and consider that a second part. Now after you separate what you have into two separate pieces, what you're going to do is you're going to factor something out of this part, and then you're going to factor something out of this part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 9x squared and 3x squared and figure out what is the greatest common factor of each one of these terms here. Now starting just with the coefficient of positive 9 and positive 3, we know that 3 is the largest factor divisible into these two numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that number. But we have an x with each one of these terms. Here we have an x squared and here we have just an x. Now that means x is common to both of these terms. We could fit 1x into here and 1x into here. Now we can't fit 2x's into here. Actually we can. However, whatever we can fit into this term also has to fit into this term. And because we cannot fit 2x's into here, we cannot take 2x's out of here. Remember, it has to be common. So we can get a 3 out of each one of these and we can get an x out of each one of these. All right, after you figure out what you can divide into each one of these terms, what you do is after writing what that common factor is, is you write parentheses and then you have to take that common factor and divide it into each one of those terms. So we know that 3x goes into 9x squared 3x times and here's why we know that. It is because if I were to take 3 times 3, that's 9, and if I took x times x, that is x to the second power. So as we factor, it's a good idea to multiply as we go to make sure it produces the number that we started with. All right, and of course 3x can fit into 3x itself one time, so we're just going to write plus 1 here. And once again, we can quickly multiply this number by this number to make sure we get this term up here. And 3x times 1 is 3x. All right, after you factor something out of these two terms here, we do the same thing with these two terms over here. Now, 3 and 1 do not have anything in common other than 1. And both terms do not have an x in them, so we cannot pull an x out of both of these. x is not common to 
both of these terms. So all we can do is pull a one out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a one on the outside. And then what we're going to do is we are going to write three X here and plus one. So when there's nothing that both terms have in common, you basically just bring that term down and you write a positive one on the outside. And just to verify, we can multiply one times three X, which is three X and one times positive one, which is positive one. All right, now when employing this method, there is something that we should notice, and that is whatever we get inside this set of parentheses, we should get the same thing in this set of parentheses. And if you got something different, that means that you must have factored wrong or something like that. So this is like a good check for us to make sure that we're on the right track. All right, so here's what we're going to do next. So what you do is you take the number in front of the parentheses or the term in front of the parentheses, which was a 3x, and you just rewrite that. And then you look at the term on the outside of the other set of parentheses. And this is positive one, so then you just write plus one. So what you do is you end up just combining these two terms on the outside of parentheses. And then you put that in its own set of parentheses. And then after that, what you do is you take what was inside each one of these parentheses, which is 3x plus one in this case, and just write it one time. So we're going to write 3x plus 1. And these are the two factors that when multiplied would give us our original quadratic equation up here, 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Now just to verify, we're going to go ahead and multiply these together just to show that it does make this right here. So the first thing we have to do is multiply this first term by that first term. 3x times 3x is 9x to the second power. And then we can multiply this term by this term. 3x times positive 1 is positive 3x. And now we jump to the second term inside parentheses. 1 times 3x is positive 3x. And 1 times 1 is positive 1. And out of these four terms here, the middle two terms can be combined. So we can simplify this to be 9x plus 6x plus 1, which is in fact the quadratic that we started with. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, the first thing that we want to do is take whatever our A value is and our C value is and multiply them together. So we have positive 12 and positive 3, which produces positive 36. And now we just have to come up with two factors of 36, which will also give us a sum of our B term, which is negative 12. Well, the two numbers that we know that can produce 36 and when added would make 12 would be 6 and 6. Now we know that 6 times 6 is 36. However, 6 plus 6 is not negative 12. We have to be mindful of this negative right here or this minus sign. However, negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. And negative 6 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 12, which is the B term that we are looking for. So after we have figured this piece out, we go back to our quadratic. We take the first term in the equation and just rewrite it, which is 12x to the second power. And then what we do is we take each one of these factors, in this case, negative 6 and negative 6, and write those out in our equation. So negative 6 and negative 6. And then we just write an x after each one of those. And make sure that when writing these two terms, that when combined, it makes this middle term in your quadratic. And then we take our last term, which is just a constant, and drop it down. All right, now that we have our four terms, what we do is we break this into two parts. So we want to factor out this part of our equation, and separately, we want to factor out this part of our equation. So we have to figure out something that fits inside 12x squared and minus 6x. Now, 6 is the greatest thing that can go into 12 and into 6, so I'm just going to write that automatically. And both of these terms have an x, so we can pull 1x out of this term, which means we can only pull 1x out of this term. So we're going to write 6x, and then we're going to write parentheses, 
and we have to divide 6x into each one of these terms. And for some people, it's just easier to figure out what would you multiply this by to get each one of these terms. Well, we know that 6 times 2 is 12, and x times x is x to the second power. All right, now I'm just going to bring down this minus sign, and if you notice, 6x is the same thing as this term here, 6x, and when they're the same thing, you just end up writing a 1, because 1 times 6x is 6x. However, because we have this minus here, we're going to treat this as a negative, so we could say that negative 1 times positive 6x is negative 6x, so that multiplication checks out. All right, now remember, when we factor out this part of our equation, we're going to end up getting the same thing inside our parentheses, and if we do not, that would mean that we must have done something wrong. All right, so we're going to factor something out of the 6x and the 3. Now, 3 is the greatest thing that we can fit into 6 and into 3, so we're going to end up just writing a 3, but we cannot get an x out of both of these terms, so we cannot factor an x out of these two terms. It is not common to these two terms. So we're going to go ahead and write a parenthesis symbol. Now notice this term leads with a negative, so what I'm going to end up doing is we're going to write that negative in front of the 3. So we're actually going to factor negative 3 out of each one of these. All right, so negative 3 goes into negative 6x, 2x times. So let's do a check really quick. If we multiply negative 3 times 2x, that would give us negative 6x. All right, now we have to take positive 3 and divide it by negative 3, which is going to be negative 1. So we just write minus 1. And notice we end up getting the same thing over here that we did over here. So, so far, so good. So whenever you're factoring out either one of these parts, if the first piece of that part is negative, you have to be careful. I just like bringing that minus down automatically and then using our integer rules to make sure everything checks out. That's why it's a good idea to multiply as you go along to make sure it produces the original terms in your equation here. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, and negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. All right, so remember what we do next is we just take the terms on the outside of each one of these sets of parentheses and just combine them together. This is a positive 6x, so we just write 6x. But this is negative 3, so we write minus 3. And then we put those inside our parentheses. And remember, this here is going to be duplicated, but we just write it one time. So we're just going to write 2x minus 1 one time in its own set of parentheses. And these are the two factors that when we multiply would produce 12x squared minus 12x plus 3. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so let's take our a term and our c term, in this case 18 and 8, and multiply them together. And that would produce 100. 44. So we have to come up with two factors that produce 144 and has a sum of our b term, which is 24. And 12 times 12 gives us 144. And 12 plus 12 has a sum of our b term, which is 24. So once again, we take our first term in our quadratic, 18x squared, and just bring that down. And then we take each one of these factors, which are each 12. And because they're positive, we write plus 12. But we have to stick an x after each one of those positive 12s. And then we bring down our last term in our quadratic, which is positive 8. All right, now we're going to factor out these two terms. And then we're going to factor out these two terms separately. Now, the greatest thing that goes into 18 and 12 is 6. So we're going to write a 6 here. And each one of these terms has an x, so we can get an x out of each one of those. And then we want to see what we multiply by 6x to make each one of these terms here. So 6 times 3 is 18, and x times x is x to the second power. So 6x times 3x is 18x squared. And we can multiply 6x by 2 to get 12x. All right, let's go ahead and factor out this part of our equation here. Now, the greatest thing that can be divided into 12 and into 8 is 4. 
So 12x divided by 4 is 3x, or we could say 3x times 4 is 12x, and 4 times 2 is equal to 8. All right, so we take the two terms that are on the outside of our parentheses and combine those together. So we have a positive 6x and a positive 4. So we write plus 4, and we stick that inside parentheses. And then we take what's inside each one of these sets of parentheses and just write it one time. So the first factor that would produce our quadratic is 6x plus 4, and we're multiplying it by 3x plus 2. All right, I want to say thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful for you to understand a little bit more about factoring quadratics. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. And I hope to see you back soon.